Today's project is for all of you that enjoy building and repairing guitars, or maybe you just like to set up and maintain your own guitars. Let's set the stage real quick before we jump into the actual project. Hit that thumbs up button if you have ever found yourself perusing the website of your favorite guitar parts and tools supplier. You come across a tool that looks super fancy, looks super handy, and you can really see it making a big difference in your workflow. You really want to add it to your collection until you see the price tag. Maybe it's $100, $200, $500. The price you just can't justify because it's so high. Well, today's project is just for you because today we're going to take one of those tools that I've been eyeing for years and I just have never been able to justify the cost and we're going to build our own. Today, we're going to build our very own version of a guitar string height gauge using a dial indicator which is gonna help us adjust the string height when we're doing setups on an instrument. For our version, we're gonna save a lot of money. We're gonna DIY it ourselves, so that makes it better already. And we're going to use what I feel is a better quality indicator than what you can get on a lot of these other versions. I'm Jeff, you're watching Home Built Workshop. Make sure you stick around, let's do this. What's going on everyone? Welcome to this episode of Home Built Workshop. I hope all of you are doing awesome. Before we jump in and start building our string height gauge, I'm gonna put a picture up here just so you know what we're talking about. And I wanna also add that I know who sells this and it's not my intention to throw any vendor or supplier under the bus. That's not what we're here to do. This picture is only as a demonstration, as a reference model, I guess, just so you know what we're gonna be making. If you take a look at this gadget, you can see that there's really not that much to it. We have a dial indicator, we have a base and some sort of a thumb screw to lock the dial indicator in place. Well, I already have a dial indicator. I've got lots of different screws and some thumb screws that we can use. The main thing that we don't have to make this thing complete is a base. Now in almost every version of this tool that I've ever seen, they all seem to have a brass base. And I believe that's probably so the tool has some weight and it sits solidly on the fretboard. Now I don't have a really great way to machine brass, but I think we can utilize 3D printing to make our own version of this base and it's gonna work equally as good, if not better. Before we can fire up the 3D printer though, we need a model that we can print. To do that, we're gonna start from scratch, jump into the CAD software and design the base. For this project, I'm starting completely from scratch, a blank slate, you might say. I don't have one of these actual tools that I can take measurements from, so I'm sort of starting from scratch and just putting in some numbers to get started. What I do have though is the dial indicator already, and I have plenty of guitars that I can take some rough measurements from. Whenever I come to a dimension that I may need to adjust, like the overall size or the size of the slots that the strings will fit up in, I always stop and create a parameter. That way it's easy to adjust later on. I don't have to go into the sketch. I can go right to the parameter, just change the number and it'll automatically update the actual body. From there, I'm really just stacking features. I'm using sketches on different surfaces to define shapes and recesses. Different extrusions will define the thickness. And then once we have everything fine tuned, We'll clean it all up with fillets and chamfers. For now, I just wanna get a rough working prototype. My goal here is to make a tool that's adjustable, repeatable, and easy to modify once we get the design actually solidified. With our first version complete, I'm gonna export this as a step file so that we can do a test print on the 3D printer. If we test out our first test print, we can see right away, I must have messed up a measurement here somewhere. The spacing on these little legs does not fit over the strings. I'm not quite sure how I messed up those measurements, but really it doesn't matter because everything is a parameter. I can just go into the parameters, change the numbers, and this will update right before your very eyes. I'm also test fitting my dial indicator and I need to make a few updates as well. I'm gonna run off another test print and we'll see where we're at from there. So here's our updated version. You can see it looks quite a bit different than what we started with. And that's because I had to just make a bunch of modifications to fit my particular dial indicator. Initially, I didn't make these recesses anywhere near deep enough. So in order to have the recess deep enough, I had to increase the height. And now we've got something that'll fit on our guitar neck. 
Now we can take our block and it'll fit over the strings and it'll sit flat on the fretboard. There's a groove in the bottom, which gives the fret some room so that we can straddle the fret as well as the strings. That's gonna work really good. Now that we have the bass fitting the neck, it straddles the strings and does all of that just like it needs to, we need to talk about the dial indicator. For the dial indicator, I'm using one by the folks over at Fowler. I've been a user of Fowler measuring tools for over 20 years and I trust their quality. The team over there sent me this one to use for this exact project and I'm super thankful to them and for their support. This particular indicator is part number 72520-1100. I believe that this particular dial indicator strikes a great balance between price and quality. I also think that this is a much higher quality indicator for the price than what you're gonna find on any of those jigs like this that you're gonna find online. So let's just install this in our 3D printed base. You can see that the tip sticks out the bottom, still might need to make a couple of adjustments there to get that to sit in the right spot. For now, I'm just gonna scoot that up. I don't even have the threaded insert in here yet, but we've got a nice snug fit. This is still a mock-up, but let's test it out. So we'll place our base right over here, straddling the strings as well as the fret. There we go. You can see if we move that, our indicator is moving. But I'm noticing a problem. If we take the base back off, and looking at the tip of the indicator, you can see that it's sort of a rounded point, like a ballpoint pen. It's not flat. So what happens is when you place this on a string, since it's tapered, it wants to slide off either side. We need that to be flat so that it lands right on the string and stays there. Now, one cool thing is that this little tip is removable. This is a 448 thread. So anything with the 448 thread can screw right into there. Now, in theory, you could take a 448 screw, file the end in nice and flat, thread that in there, and bam, be done with it. I guess also, you really could just file this down, but I don't want to destroy this tip because I might want to use that for something else later on. I went on the old interwebs, and I found some replacement tips. These are some sort of imported off-brand, but... It's got a 448 thread. This one in particular is a quarter inch in diameter, dead flat on there, and it is gonna work perfect for what we need it for. It's gonna give us a nice flat surface to lay against the string. It's not gonna slip off. And we still have our other tip that we've saved for later in case we need to actually measure something else. Now, since I changed the size of this tip, unfortunately, that did mean I had to go back and make some changes to the model for the base, but that's the beauty of 3D printing. You can just make whatever changes necessary and hit that print button, bam, you got yourself a whole new version, super easy to adapt, modify, change around for whatever you need. Thankfully, it doesn't take all that long to print because I had to do this a few times to get the design just right where it fits this new tip. On this newest version, I've made a few updates to it besides changing the clearances in these holes to fit the new tip. I've also made this a little bit taller so that I could get more of a recess here. And also I've moved these holes for the threaded inserts to the back instead of on the sides. I found out pretty quick that there just wasn't enough meat to install the inserts. This dimension really can't change because it has to fit over the string. So if I just make this wider, I'm making it bigger really for no reason. And I'm afraid it's gonna maybe make it a little more unstable. So I moved those holes in the back. I'm not 100% sure that I really need those threaded inserts, but I wanna go ahead and install them just in case. This friction fit is really good, but if it becomes a problem just being friction fit, I want the option to be able to put a little screw in there just to hold everything in place. I've also added on the front some initials for guitar because I basically duplicated this design, changed the dimensions so that it fits with a bass, and now we can have one for bass, one for guitar, swap out the indicator as necessary, and we can have both ready to go. Now we're ready to fire up the soldering iron 
and install these heat set inserts. These inserts that I'm using are an 832 thread. Now I'll just put this together. I'll show you how it works. I'll just slip that dial indicator into place. I'm going to install the indicator until the tip, the flat tip that we installed is just about flush with the bottom. This is still friction fit, but I do have a screw here that I'm going to use for now. Eventually I'll get some little thumb wheels, but for now, just a screw, finger tight only. I don't want to bend anything in the indicator. It's just barely snug to hold everything in place. And now what we can do is place this right over our first fret. And you can see that our indicator is in fact moving. Now, if you wanted to zero this out, just zero out your dial. With our dial indicator zeroed out, we'll now push down on the string on either side of the fret. And since we're at zero, that looks like it's moving about 24 thousandths, 23 thousandths, which is a little bit high in my opinion. So I might wanna look at lowering the action on this guitar. Move to the next string, you can zero it out. Now on this string, I'm kind of noticing that the tension of the string is kind of wiggling our gauge. You see that a little bit? And I think that is where the brass base on the commercially available ones might have an advantage because you have the extra weight there. Now, a couple things that I might do for this particular model is reprint this at maybe 100% infill so I can get more plastic in there, more weight. But there's another little trick that I want to show you that we could do if we need to. I'm not going to do it yet, but this is maybe later on down the road, something we might want to look at. On the back of these indicators, there are four screws that hold the back panel in place. In the back of these, there's a little return spring right here. And the only job of that spring is to pull that plunger down. We can remove this spring, which will take this extra tension off of the indicator. It's not gonna affect the way the indicator measures or anything. It's just gonna remove that spring tension. Now, like I said, I'm not gonna do that right away. I wanna try reprinting this base first to see if having a little extra weight will make a difference. But if it still continues to be an issue, we can consider either stretching this spring a little bit just to remove some of the tension or taking it off completely. It's going to be up to you. I'm not telling you to take your indicator apart right away. Just know that this is an option. If you find that your indicator maybe is pushing the string down instead of moving the indicator at first, it could affect your reading. So just keep that in mind. That is an option. You could remove that spring. Again, I'm not going to yet, but maybe later. That is super cool to be able to measure the heights exactly of each string so you can fine tune your setups and know exactly where your instrument is set. Really handy. In the past, I've used feeler gauges to do this, but you're always wondering, well, do I have the stack just right? Is that just enough friction? Do I need a little more friction when you're measuring? This takes all of the guesswork out of it. And you can just see right away the movement. It's so cool. I think this is going to work out really well. There's one last thing that I want to mention before we wrap this up, and that's the fact that I put a seven and a quarter inch radius on the bottom of both of these, the one for the guitar as well as the bass. And I was thinking about this and the fact that if the bottom is flat, 
it's not going to sit right on a radius fretboard. It's going to rock back and forth. And how do you know if you're really in the right spot? Your measurements are going to be off. By putting a seven and a quarter inch radius on there, that is the smallest radius that I'm going to be measuring. And I believe it's going to work really well with all the other radiuses. It's just going to sit nice and flat. The outer legs are going to work great. It's going to give it a nice, stable footprint. It's going to work awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little DIY guitar string height measurement gauge. I don't know if that's a technical term or not, but I am glad to have made this. Again, this was something that I've wanted to make for quite a while. And by using 3D printing, we were able to make one for a lot less than we can buy one for. Links to these parts are down below in the video description. And also, I want to hear from all of you. What project have you used 3D printing for to create a tool, a jig, a fixture, something like that, that made your work life a little bit easier? It doesn't have to be related to just guitar building. I just want to hear. Give me some of your creative ideas down below in the comments. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this one, found it helpful. I'm going to get to measuring some guitar necks. We'll see you guys next time. That is too cool. My baritone needs a little bit of a setup adjustment. Yeah, yeah, it does. Now we know exactly how much we need to remove. This is going to be great.